Hi, today's video blog post is in response to a question that was asked on the GPUG forum. So that's the GP user group forum. And it has to do with Excel refreshable reports and making them refresh went automatically upon opening and refreshing any pivot table you would create using the data. And that's something that really can't be done in and of itself because to get the pivot table to refresh automatically, you have to use VBA code and then it gets complex. And so what I'm going to do is show you an easy way that you could achieve this result. And it's going to require you creating your own Excel refreshable reports, but you can make them available inside of your GP data. If you're in the GP database, you could put them in there and with all the other Excel refreshable reports and you'll be able to access them. So let's get started. I'm going to do a simple GL account summary report today. So what I'm going to do, uh, you know, I'm in Excel 2016. So you're going to want to be in 2016 or you could download, if you're using Excel 2013, you could download something called Power Query and utilize that. And so that's how we're gonna do that. Now, let's go ahead and start connecting to our data. So what I'm gonna do in my Excel 2016 is click on Data, and then I have this Get and Transform section. And if you're using Excel 2013, you would connect using an option on your menu called Power Query. And what I'm gonna do is in this Get and Transform, Let's tell it I want to get data, and I want to get data from where? I want to get it from my database, from a SQL Server database. So there we go. So it's going to pull up this little window. If you don't know the name of your SQL Server, just talk to your partner, and they'll be able to help you do that, or someone in your IT department. The name of my SQL database is BusyBee, and you need to know the company ID that you want to access, and you could locate this inside of your GP or again ask your partner. If you're looking in GP you need to go to the company setup window so that's administration, setup, company, and then company again. Um, otherwise just ask your partner or your IT person. Okay and now what's going to happen is uh, it's going to pull up this navigator and this navigator will pull up a list of all views and tables in my GP. Now I do need to have access to them. However you were granted access for your Excel refreshable report should work for you for those same views. You want to stick with anything in this list that is a name you can read. All the Excel reports are created from these views and a view is just a virtual table where everything is linked together right. A lot of the the uh, detail, like if it's a uh, true, false, yes, no question, like is a customer inactive, yes, no, um, that's what you'll see as opposed to zero or one. And in the names of the columns will be something that makes sense. If I just click on it, I can see a preview of the table over here on the right to ensure that is indeed the one that I want to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. So the query editor window is going to open up. And this is where I could do a little bit of work on my data or data modeling. Very simple to do. There, I like to, I have three rules. First rule over here in the query name, make sure it's something that makes sense. So this is my GL account summary information. So I'm just going to give it a name GL summary. That's not changing anything in SQL, that's just changing the name of the connection for this file. The second thing I encourage people to do is remove any unnecessary columns. And I say err on the side of caution and get rid of it if you think you're not going to need it. Because adding it back in, adding it back in is a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do on the home menu, on this home ribbon, I'm going to click on the image of choose column. If I click where there's a down arrow, and this is true in Office products, you get an option. I don't want to go to the column, I want to choose column. So if I simply click on the icon, I'll get that window. And see how easy this is to select. I'm going to unselect, like I don't want any columns, and then I'm going to tell it which columns that I'm interested in. So I'm only interested in a few. I'll also get the date created, why not? And now I can see all of my columns here. Now the third rule that Belinda has is I suggest you go ahead and format them exactly as you think they need to be. So I'm going to select all the columns and unselect, and I'm just using the shift and the control key, just like you would in any Windows application, to select, these are all the ones that should be text columns. 
So again, on the home ribbon over here where it says data type, I'm going to choose that these are text. These two are numerical ones. You can see they're already set to decimal. I still go ahead and even though if they're set correctly, I still go ahead and set them exactly as I want. I do not want Excel guessing. I want to override what Excel has. Here on the created date, I'm going to change it from date time to just date. Now this is Fabricam. Everything that you use is going to actually have a real date. You can see some of these do. This is 1-1-1900. It's empty. It's null. And that's just because it's just fake lesson data. All right, so now what I might want to do is I'm only going to use the net of these balances, so I don't need to see debit and credit. So I'm going to come up and choose Add Column, and I'll choose to add a custom column. Now, I only suggest adding custom columns for simple math or if you want to add a string, like maybe a company name. So here what I'm going to do is call this net. And I'll do debit minus credit and I'll click OK. And as you can see, it has a data type of ABC123. And if I go back to the home ribbon, it says any because it doesn't know what to do with it. I'm going to force it to be a decimal. And now that I've got that done, I'm going to highlight the debit and credit. I no longer need those. So I'm going to just right mouse click and choose to remove. Now you'll notice that everything I do is being tagged in these applied steps. So if I go back to where I added that custom column, the debit and credit still show. So the fact that I'm creating this custom column before I'm removing them, I'll still get my value. And you could right mouse click here and rename. So you could just say added net column. And then here on the removed, perhaps I want to right mouse click and rename them. Remove columns, debit and credit. And then that way I can keep track of all my steps. Now I've got this set the way that I want to set it. So I'm going to just come up here to close and load. And you notice again, I told you about this drop down arrow. If I simply click on the icon, it's going to close and load, meaning it's going to put all of this data into an Excel table. But I'm going to choose close and load two, and this other window will pop up. And I could choose to close and load it to, directly to a pivot table if I want, or just create the connection or add the data to the data model. I'm going to add the data to the data model, and I'm going to go ahead and add a pivot table report. And now, let me make this a little bit bigger. You can see I have this query pane, and I have my pivot table pane. And I'm going to close out the query pane. I could easily get it back by going up to data and then coming up here to queries and connections, under queries and connections, and get it back. And you can see there's my query, there's my connection, it's a data model in this book. I'm going to go ahead and close that out again. Now I'll start making my pivot table. So here on my pivot table, I'm going to put in the account number, account description, and the net amount. There it is. All right, so let me just clean this up a little bit. Put it in tabular form and do not show subtotals. And then what I'm going to do over here is right mouse click choose the value setting and make this a currency number. All right, so here's my pivot table. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and put in a slicer for the year. There we go. So let's put in 2027. Uh, okay, so what I want to do, I do need to open up that queries and connection again. There it is. I'm going to right mouse click on it. You notice if I just hover over it, I see the preview of the data that I set up. But I'm going to right mouse click on it and choose Properties. And then over here in the Properties, I'm going to tell it to refresh the data when opening the file. And I could tell it to, if I keep it open to refresh every so often. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And let me close that back out. And I'm going to save it. All right. Let me save it. Now, another little tip here. If you save it to where you deploy your files, it will appear in your GP. So let's call this one account blog summary. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click Save. Great. Now that we have that set up, what I want to do is I'm going to just highlight, just to show you how this is working, highlight the cash amount, and then up here I'm going to type in the cash amount, and we will format that just to make it easier to see and highlight it. So you can see they are indeed the same. 
So let's save this. Let's close this out. And there it is, my account blog summary. And forgive the fact that it's on there twice. I double deployed mine and so everything shows up twice, but that's okay. And now that I've got my blog post there, it's going to be easier to pull up inside of my GP. So let me go ahead and change that number in my GP. So I'll just do a general journal entry for speed. Let's say I bought some Girl Scout cookies. Great. Open this up. We're going to code it to miscellaneous expense. And let's say I bought $50 worth, so I bought enough for the whole office and let me select the cash account. So we should be reducing our cash balance by $50. So let me go ahead and post this. Great. Let me double just click right here, right inside my Excel. And the Excel files are right inside my GP. And the Excel file is going to open. Enable the content. And look right there it's still calculating keep an eye out and you could see it indeed changed and all i had to do was just use the query editor which the advantage of learning the query editor is it's the same query editor and the same methodology as you would use in microsoft power bi and then i just turn it on to refresh there sorry this is such a long video but i hope it helps